Hey everybody, good to see you all back again. The goal of today's episode is to finish up the um, starting system refurb we've been doing on old 5U7968. So yeah, like I mentioned yesterday, went through the carburetor, um, completely did it all. We've got fresh um, seals on all the, uh, the choke and throttle shafts, fresh screws on all the plates. Um, I even took the little bypass plug that uh, bypasses air around the closed throttle plate took that out made sure that passage up there was all clean once again I've got a five video series on how to rebuild these and um, the float bowl portion of it the little compensating jet down in the bottom of the bowl sure enough that was plugged blocked completely solid so I drilled a couple of the plugs out right there and right there and was able to go through and get all those passages really good and cleaned out and um, fresh inlet needle and seat gaskets all that other good stuff so that carburetor should be ready to go also um, did a clean out on the pony fuel tank just to be sure um, refurbed the sediment bowl got a good stack of those uh, edge filters up in there that's just as important of a part of a carburetor rebuild is making sure your tank is clean and that anything crud potential bad fuel whatever will be trapped there before it can get to there otherwise all that work was for nothing got the uh, pony air cleaner uh, spruced up as well so let's get it all put together I don't know this stuff's supposed to turn to snow here in about 12 hours we're right down to it so while I put this together we might as well talk a bit um, under the prior episode channel member PA Mutter asks does it strike you as odd that cat made it so difficult to access the pinion drive which seems to be an assembly requiring frequent attention it sometimes seems that the whole pony motor was an afterthought. Well, to answer that question, I've covered the um, pony motor design question in an earlier video, and I can throw a link up at the end of the episode here. It's titled something like uh, Pony Motor Cursed by Design or Just Right? Question mark, question mark. And I did a comprehensive breakdown of uh, intended lifespan of the starting engine versus the diesel engine and how if you went by the book in a perfect world the wear rates should pretty much match up when one is worn out the other's also ready for a recondition as well but this pony start system is very much an all or nothing type setup you can't really do just like a patch repair on one area and then expect it to perform as intended uh, you have to do it all so either every last piece is 100 percent or you're going to be fighting something so you need to have a good tight engine you need to have a good governor you need to have a good carburetor you need to have a good mag you need to have a good electric start system if so equipped you need to have an entirely good pinion system and then they're basically bulletproof once i've gone through an entire pony start system top to bottom front to back it's years between service intervals at that point like uh the five u i just noticed sorry to we're going down a rabbit hole <laughs> the welded extensions on these uh, choke and throttle rods i think someone was tired of getting bit by that uninsulated uh, <laughs> spark plug lead but on um 5u7066 2009 i think i finished the rebuild on that whole machine um entire starting system included i've never had to go back and touch it since not even for a carb clean out so if you get them right uh they're reliable and i know I'm, I'm a bit biased but you'd never convince me that an electric start direct electric start system is better than a properly functioning pony start and that ties into the fact that yes that pinion drive is difficult to access but the reason why they seem to always need attention is a cumulative effect of years and years of people basically having abused the system because they don't really understand how it's supposed to work. You'd be surprised how many people I've talked to that don't realize you take the clutch lever and pull it to the rear, that actuates a brake. They did not even know that was a thing. Another guy I talked to at a show one time, I told him that you shouldn't have to hold the pinion lever up constantly to keep your pony in mesh with the diesel. And he looked almost dumbfounded when I told him that because he said I've been running these pony start caps for 30 years and they've all been that way and everyone's always said that they're that way well there seems to be a willful ignorance if you will regarding the pony start systems that a lot of people just write them off as they're just problematic by nature and 
it's bolstered by the fact that most of them that people have ran over the years have been problematic by nature. But with a little bit of knowledge and just knowing how to properly maintain and properly operate one of these, you can get them in good shape and they'll last for a long, long time. But these pinion drives have been so abused over the years you buy into an old cat you might as well figure the people have been grinding the gear they haven't been using the brake or they don't have their over center set right and it's just been abused to the point that it's an item that you can just about you know you can just about guarantee it's going to need a complete rebuild so that's why i get so deep into the details um sometimes to the point that people get bored and wander off because i'm just trying to get more of this information out there and especially for new old caterpillar buyers like the amount of people on youtube that still use the on off switch to shut them down instead of running them out of gas doesn't take very many searches you can find all kinds of that stuff so a part of preserving this stuff is knowing how to properly maintain and operate it and i'm just trying to get all of that education if you will out there so all right we're getting close to a fire up here fresh gas in the fuel tank all of our Fuel taps are turned on. Here we are. Uh, no leaks. Bowl is good. Lines are good. I have a screwdriver at the ready because we'll have to most likely do a few uh, adjustments to that carb. The high speed adjustment needle is accessed through here. Low speed is accessed on the side and they are both the same. You turn them in to richen the mixture, turn them out to lean it. And I'm going to be attempting the first startup without the uh, diesel engine air cleaner or inlet pipe because we've been into the governor. There's a very small chance anything is not right in there. But just in case something did not get put back properly and it wants to spool up and run away, we've either got the compression release to try to stop it or our block off board that'll choke it out. So other than that, it'll be typical startup procedure. like a champ.
final move of the year. So needless to say, we've got the inlet pipe, the air cleaner, and the hood all back on. Just enough to run it up here and get it packed away for the winter. So everything's rolled out, ready to, uh, where's Scully? Huh. I didn't think he'd uh, ever leave his beer. Scully! What are you doing? <laughs> uh, all right, I see. It won't start, huh? <laughs> oh, I swear I can't leave you unattended for... Oh, my God. All right, son. So, I can see your problem. I can see it from here. So, listen to me this time. All right, get the wax out of your ears. Okay, take that B. Take the letter B. Flip it. Pony. All right? It's a pony motor. It, like a small horse. Pony motor. Uh, can hardly tell I'm gonna live to regret him. Sure glad I made those tracks yesterday. <laughs> well everyone, it is the next day and sure enough the snow arrived right on schedule. It was kind of a whirlwind day yesterday, but I guess this year nobody can tell me I didn't use every bit of what I had. <laughs> All the good weather right up until this. Let's make some light here. So, now that we have time to talk, <laughs> full stable. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get this one up here or not, but we made it. And I think you all can appreciate the progression of things now looking back on the move. I started with the tractors that I knew would at least start and run to get up here. And then I moved on to the two tractors that I knew would run if we pull started them. And then, against all odds, we finished up with the tractor that wasn't really in shape to do either. And I'm really happy we have this last D2 running and driving now. However, I was not entirely happy with that pony carb yesterday. So there it is. I pulled it back off of the uh, starting engine this morning. I'm gonna bring that home. We'll go through it a little bit more. I still couldn't get good fine tune adjustment on it. I wasn't happy with how it ran RPM ranges. We may still need to get into the governor. Like I said yesterday, these pony setups are an all or nothing deal. They're either 100% right or you'll still have issues. So we'll revisit that and then we might dig into this a little bit more come spring. But uh, quite a few questions in the last couple episodes uh, wondering whose D2s are these two? So yeah, I've got uh, these two are mine, Swamp Angel and Iron Mistress. And two years ago, I purchased this D2 and this D2 both for senior. And I think I've come to the conclusion this D2 is gonna be a parts unit. The whole back end is just out of it. That's a really stand up machine. Well, Scully, well, he's claimed the, uh, the growly back D2. I think he's gonna hang out here for a bit. He's got his beer back. He's good to ride out the first snow anyway. 
So back here on the home place, back to the cat shack where we just finished our work. We see another D2 in there already. Yeah, after we got 7968 parked up in the pole barn yesterday, uh, just before dark, I did manage to get Senior's D2 fired up and literally shoehorned into here. Um, and I had to angle the blade to narrow it up. Still, it barely fits. I had to throw some Farmall H axles from that corner real quick to get the room. But yeah, this is Senior's D2, 5U4399. We're keeping this one here on the home place in case we need a dozer blade for worst case scenario snow removal this year. But between the two D2s up in the red shed and this one, I think I can take old Growly back 5U, used for parts, fix up Seniors, and fix up the D2 that we just did the pinion work on and have two really nice stand-up units. So I think that about rounds us out for the D2s we have, at least the ones that aren't in pieces. So my plan now is all of the cat parts I've got in this tin shack, everything on those shelves, everything up there, all those shelves, these crates, all of this is getting cleaned out of here and will be organized, cataloged, crated up as necessary and stored away inside my shipping container now that it's not completely full of tractors. A lot of questions about X253, the prototype crawler, that will be staying right here because this can is the most secure and most well-protected place that I have to store it. So that is gonna be staying put. Otherwise, I'll buy some more of these shelving units like I have back here. We'll pull the crawler back. The wood D2 cab is up ahead. We'll move that back. We'll fill this back in with shelving units. We'll stack it floor to ceiling. So this will be the new cat parts storage area as well as for X253. So now you all see kind of what the whole plan has been this entire time. So I thank you all for watching. Um, Senior did mention he would like to see if we can get my wide RD6 put into his pole barn for the winter. There's supposed to be a little mini thaw coming up next week, but this time of year, you never know what you're going to get. So we are just going to uh, play that by ear. If it doesn't um, turn around weather-wise, it'll sit there under its cover for the rest of the winter season. So I hope to see you all back again. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Winter's here. <laughs>